We are werewolves, not swearwolves. But although the immortal words of Reese Darby's reluctant werewolf Anton were a resounding success for the world of horror comedy, Taika Waititi and Jermaine Clement's incredible 2014 What We Do in the Shadows highlighted a very important trope of horror based lycanthropy. It's incredibly difficult to pull off a werewolf scare fest without somehow also poking fun at it. For decades, werewolves have often lingered in the moonlit shadows of their blood sucking counterparts and have rarely been given the cinematic depiction. That a snarling, frenzied werewolf truly deserves. But although few, there are some horror films that manage to level the playing field. Let's take a look, shall we? Hello, horror fans, what's going on? And once again, welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host, Jack Finch, as today we curiously take a look at the top 5 scariest werewolf movies of all time. Roll the clip. <laughs> For the curious amongst you, that clip was from 1941's The Wolfman, because much like with Nosferatu of our vampire list, we first have to pay homage to the cinematic horror inspiration of our predecessors, because, well, it's only polite and good manners can go a long distance, even if you are afflicted with lycanthropy. The truth of the matter is though, the curse of the werewolf is a concept deeply rooted in cultural history, and is in fact perhaps the first instance of body horror in gothic literature. It directly confronts our culture with the question, where does the man end and the beast begin? Kicking off our number five, Silver Bullet, 1985. You may sense a trend in this list, and it's that the early 80s seemed to have a fervent desire to try and nail down the werewolf genre once and for all. And what better way to do that than with a tale from the king of horror himself, of the Stephen variety, of course. Based on his novella Cycle of the Werewolf, Silver Bullet set out to capture that nostalgic suburban coming of age miasma that Stephen King has so often perfected. And Silver Bullet is exactly that, whilst also just being a damn good horror film. Directed by Dan Attias with a screenplay from Stephen King himself, the film stars the one and only Corey Haim as Marty Kozlow, as well as none other than the legendary Gary Busey as his shambolically charming Uncle Red. The thing is though, Silver Bullet, whilst it manages to deliver some pretty decent, consistent spooks, is also a pretty hilarious horror comedy in parts, although perhaps at times it doesn't intend to be. Not only is it funny though, it also has a rare charm that is often found in some of King's similar works, particularly played out in the relationship between Marty and Uncle Red as they hunt down a werewolf plaguing their small town. It's a werewolf horror film and it's a Stephen King film, and that's good enough for me. Swinging in at number four, The Howling, 1981. <laughs> Talking of the 80s, now we're getting into some of the era's best. The fact that this film only comes in at number four might perturb some people, but believe me when I say that the next few films on this list are pretty tight. By the by though, 1981's The Howling is just a damn good movie, and when you look past the questionable performances, it's still an incredibly intelligent horror film. Directed by Joe Dante and based upon the Gary Brander novel of the same name, The Howling tells the tale of a woman named Karen and her husband Bill, who are sent to the remote mountains of Los Angeles to a rehabilitation resort called The Colony. Well, you know what's what, guys. This is a werewolf list and of course turns out the colony is actually populated by ravenous werewolves hungry for human flesh and their sole intention is to bite as many humans as possible to bolster their ranks. Also although they may seem a little dated now, the special effects in this film from the legendary Rob Bottin were absolutely cutting edge stuff at the time and it served as testament to the creative lengths that filmmakers can go with the intention of turning an actor into a furious snarling lichen. Werewolves, mountains, 80s blood and gore. Yeah, it's all good stuff. Coming up next at number three, Dog Soldiers, 2001. And come on guys, I'm going to be a little bit biased here, but if you're asking me, there's only one British werewolf movie ever worth mentioning and it's this one, 2001's Dog Soldiers, which kind of makes me feel a little bit old actually. Nevertheless though, nostalgic werewolf movies aside, Dog Soldiers is just a fantastic action horror onslaught and it's a must watch for any budding horror fanatic and more importantly, it's quintessential British satire at its best, although you might need to sink your teeth in a little bit deeper to realise that. Written and directed by Neil 
Neil Marshall, the man responsible for the awesome 2005 horror The Descent, Dog Soldiers tells the tale of a group of British soldiers out on a training exercise in the Scottish Highlands. Of course, turns out that they're being hunted by werewolves, but the thing that makes Dog Soldiers such a fantastic horror film is that Marshall does away with that worn out trope of boo hoo, I'm a werewolf and it's super sad, why do I spend so much money on clothes, and instead just turns everything up to 11 and relies on some simple, good old fashioned horror mathematics. Soldiers versus demonic wolf hell dogmen. And because of that, it's awesome. Dog Soldiers is essentially Evil Dead, just with less questionable teenagers, more blood covered soldiers, and of course, some horrifying man eating werewolves. Next up, round number two Ginger Snaps, 2000. Ginger Snaps. What a film. What a fantastic teen horror tour de force filled to the brim with late 90s angst and of course puberty based lycanthropy. The thing is though, just like how Dog Soldiers manages to depart its way from the tired tropes of werewolf horror, Ginger Snaps also did exactly that, just in a complete and utterly different direction, providing stark proof that you can still make a charming werewolf horror, you just have to do things a little bit. Weird. And that's what Ginger Snaps is. It's a calling card to all those kids that didn't quite fit in at school or had a macabre fascination with the darker sides of emotion or, you know, ended up getting bitten by a werewolf. Either or. Written and directed by John Fawcett, Ginger Snaps tells a tale of two teenage sisters, Bridget and Ginger Fitzgerald, who share a morbid fascination with death, a theme which binds them together on Ginger's transmorphic, lycanthropic journey. Let's not pander lightly, whilst being a fantastic horror film, Ginger Snaps serves as a vivid, bare bones allegory for the trials and tribulations that young women face when growing up, and it plays wholeheartedly to that formula that if you want to make a damn good werewolf movie, you better be willing to do things a little bit differently. Also, it's got one of the most fitting soundtracks of all time. Yeah, Ginger Snaps, guys, of course it makes this list. And finally, at our number one spot, An American Werewolf in London, 1981. You're gonna help me up or what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that you've all been watching this list waiting for the time that this one rears its ugly 80s head. Because despite the point that I've been consistently trying to make, there is in fact one werewolf horror flick that earns the right to fully submit itself to those same tired tropes. This one, 1981's An American Werewolf in London, a complete and utter enigma that is far too horrifying to be a comedy and far too comedic to be a horror. But there, in actual fact, lies the true weird majesty of this film. Written and directed by the legendary National Lampooner. John Landis, An American Werewolf was actually one of three werewolf movies that were all released in 1981. The Howling, which already made this list, Wolfen, which is great but isn't really a werewolf movie, and of course this one, which is perhaps the best werewolf movie ever made. But that's the thing, it doesn't even try to be. It somehow manages to be hilarious without even trying while simultaneously being horrifying in the exact same moment. The main reason for that though are the genre defining special effects from the legendary designer Rick Baker who pretty much set the benchmark for his astounding physical depiction of a werewolf transformation. Let's not beat about the bush, the narrative for an American werewolf is pretty cut and shut, but that's not why it's fantastic. It's in the tight dialogue, the zingy one liners, the terrifying moments of body horror, and the point of no return that happens when a full moon looms ominously in the night sky. Well, there we have it, horror fans, our list for the top five scariest werewolf movies of all time. What do you reckon? Do you agree? Or do you have any more to add to this list? Why don't you let us know your thoughts down in the comment box below? Also, we'd just like to give a massive shout out to our recent subscribers. Guys, we just hit half a million subs, and we couldn't have done it without you all. You're the best damn horror fans that there ever could be. Cheers guys, this one's for you. Unfortunately though, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you're a fan of this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your horror host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos, and until next time, you take it easy.